El Secuencia Podcast puede contener palabras explícitas y una abundancia de sal. Por perdense que estamos hablando de la trilogía El Mariachi. Thank you, Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> I love your movies. <laughs> did, your, did your wife coach you on that? No, my wife doesn't speak Spanish. My uh, really? shout out to Christian, my workmate. We sat in a crush control room for a while and he helped me practice my intro. Wow. <laughs> well done. Gracias. Gracias. And uh, if I pronounce anything wrong, it is because I am a huero bendejo. <laughs> 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 Welcome, everybody, to the Salty Nerd Podcast. I'm your host, the Salty Nerd. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Robert Rodriguez's trilogy, El Mariachi, Desperado, and Once Upon a Time in Mexico. And I am joined, as always, by my illustrious co-host, starting with the barbarian space viking. What's up, V? Hola. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's too sexy. It's too sexy. No. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. Good, good. I'm also joined by the ambassador of estrogen, Jude. Welcome to the show. Buenos dias, cabrón. <laughs> yes, I've learned all my swear words from this trilogy. I'm also joined by the author extraordinaire, Matthew Kadish. What's up? I want some piss warm chango. <laughs> I would like an enchirito and something from Taco Bell. These, this, this, I love this movie. I love these movies so much. It's ridiculous. All right, guys. Um, before we dive super deep into this awesome trilogy, a real quick word from our sponsors. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you want to support this podcast, go to saltynerdclub.com. That takes you to our Patreon page. There you can pick whatever tier you want. And in return, you will get some exclusive content and some really cool stuff. And you get to chat with the uh, co host of the podcast. So saltynerdclub.com. Appreciate your help. Help us build the brand and build the podcast so we can make awesome content for you. All right, guys, let's get into this. The first movie in our list today is El Mariachi, directed mm. by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, Jude, yes. why don't you take it away? What is this movie all about? Hold on, while I oh, sip God. my bev. <laughs> 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 all right, so El Mariachi in, from 1992. It's has a runtime of 82 minutes. It was rated R. It had a budget of $7,000. Nice. What do you think it brought in? Um, 200,000. What about you, V? 50. Two million dollars. Whoa! This movie <laughs> set it off. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, uh, when I found out what the budget was and what it, I mean, I, I didn't even need to know what it brought in. I was just watching this and then I looked up what the budget was and I was like, oh my God, they did so much with this money. Mm -hmm. And like, you can guarantee nobody who's in this movie got paid to be there. They're just doing it for, for fun, for the joy of doing yeah. it. And you can so tell I lost my mind over this movie. I'd never seen it before. Really? And I couldn't believe that I'd never seen it before. Like we started <laughs> watching it and I was like, wait a minute. I've never seen this before. <laughs> yeah, right. like part of the mythology behind this movie was the fact that it was made for $7,000. Like the story of the making of this movie um, is part of the reason why Hollywood went crazy over it. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about that. I mean, bit. after it was released, uh, Columbia did spend $200,000 like sprucing it okay. up. Um, but that's just post-production stuff. Like what it costs to make this is just, it's just so little. Yeah. And they gave us so much with what they had. It's like $7,000 yeah. in squibs for the blood shooting out. They used condoms. <laughs> they used condoms. blood. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Actually, um, you know, if you set aside the cost of film and processing and color correction, uh, he only spent like 600 bucks. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. How much yeah. did, uh, how much did Peter Jackson spend on bad taste? More than seven thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> this one was better. <laughs> Way oh, better. so much better. I actually finished this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> El Mariachi just wants to play his music and drink soda pop. Unfortunately, Azul, a disgruntled ex-employee of crime lord Moco, is walking around looking like the mariachi while he picks off members of Moco's crew. And everywhere Mariachi goes, he's hounded by Moco's men in a deadly case of mistaken identity. Also, moco means bugger. Bugger? No, it's, it's booger. Booger? Oh. I'm pretty sure it's booger. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of white people. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, um, I haven't, I hadn't seen this movie in a long, long time. Um, I, my experience with this one was I didn't know it existed until after I had already seen Desperado and Once Upon a Time in Mexico. And then I realized that those two movies were part of a trilogy and I was like, what, mm -hmm. what is that? So yeah. I went back and I watched this one, not knowing it was completely in Spanish. And I was like, well, heck man, this is like an origin story. It didn't I gotta, even matter. No, it doesn't. I mean, there's so little dialogue to begin with, but 
just it's all just a visual style and and it's one of the things i really like about um this trilogy and robert rodriguez's style of filmmaking is it feels like i'm watching a comic book like we have all these comic book movies out nowadays you know marvel dc all this stuff his el mariachi trilogy feels like i'm turning the page through a comic book you have your splash pages you have your transitions where it's like person standing here and then he cuts the couple of seconds out and then they're they're already walking to a different direction it just feels like you turn the page and you're looking at another section it's it's such a cool style and i i, I enjoy this freaking movie so much it's not even funny yeah it's uh it's so much fun there's like a cool like you said, a mistaken identity. There's a little bit of a revenge factor in here. And it's everyone in here, everyone in this movie is like a hilarious caricature, mm -hmm. you know, like there's just so much, um, there's, there's so much comedy like written into each scene that it's not like things that people say that's funny. It's just like things that happen yeah. that just take a moment and it, but it's just so funny and it's so good. <laughs> It's so good. Jude was surprised by how much she liked this movie. She, <laughs> that's awesome. I couldn't believe I hadn't seen it before. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Vader, what did you think about El Mariachi? I think you guys just like cheap movies. <laughs> <laughs> did okay. you not? Did you but not like it? You brought yeah, it was up. Okay. It was all right. You brought up bad taste earlier. Yeah. And that's Peter Jackson's first movie. Yeah. So the difference between Peter Jackson's first movie and Robert Rod Rodriguez's first movie, there's just such a wealth of difference there. This is a great movie. It's not <laughs> It's not a great movie by today's cinematic standards, but yeah. like for a director's first movie, for this to come together so seamlessly and to be so presentable compared to the mess that Bad Taste was. Hey, I, I have to take <laughs> I'm not finished speaking, <laughs> sir. No, bad, bad Taste is, an, is a masterpiece. It, it's every bit as inventive and creative as this movie is, um, but on an entirely different scale. Like both Peter Jackson and Robert Rodriguez showed what's possible for independent filmmaking if you're just creative and resourceful and awesome, basically. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's cool that, Agreed. that when, you, uh, when I watch this movie, I can see the unpolished version of the other two movies. Like you see a lot of the same an camera angles and action shots in this movie as you do like i kind of feel like desperado is almost like a a remake of this one kind of sorta yeah it's very very similar yeah and i feel like this was his original try unpolished you know green brand new director just doing it for seven thousand dollars i like this better than desperado what oh, i no do way. no like no, no, i've no. seen desperado a million times yeah. and i love I, uh, it then once i saw this i just had such an appreciation for it that it made me like it more than desperado wow, this is i your... don't like desperado any less yeah but this is this, this is... Blew me away. This is her wow. jam. Yeah, this is cool. She, I, I'm, she I'm likes, happy that she's so stoked about this. She this likes really cool. She likes cheap student movies, I guess. So <laughs> I like fine. cheap movies, cheap looker, and cheap men. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what I felt about this movie. I felt like I was watching, um, you know, Robert Rodriguez's student film, student thesis film, or something. You know, I'm. It's and it was cool. It's totally fine. I have no real issues with it. It just comes off cheap and and studenty. Because yeah. that's what it is, and I don't really—it's not your bag. It's huh? not my bag. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like cheap effects. I, I I like big splashy CGI movies, you know, and that's just what I like. But this is so. one of those movies where the the story to this movie is so good that you know you can look past the the low budget aspect of it, and that's kind of that's always been my thing. Is like if if the story is solid, if the story is good, you can forgive you know, not having big flashy special effects because the story carries it time and time again. Whereas if you don't have a good story, but you have fancy special effects and cinematography and stuff like that, after the first couple of times you see it, that gets old and you get bored with it. Um, so like, you know, if you don't have a good story, you don't have a good movie. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that El Mariachi is actually a pretty fun, interesting, good Very story. Fun. Yeah, the concept that I love the most is the guitar case full of guns. It's so freaking cool and inventive and and stupid. No, it's awesome. <laughs> no, it's, it's stupid in a good way. It's just silly. Yeah. It's awesome. That's what I, I love mean it. by like a caricature. Like yeah. who's walking around with a guitar case full of guns? I might have and to then do. It. They up the ante in each movie. Then it's like it like has a secret flap and the, oh, yeah. and the and the guns are and then and then the the guitar oh, case well, that shoot. We're like, gonna get there. <laughs> each movie gets more and more absurd, but in a good way. I love it. It almost like. 
it reminds me it has like a mad max mixed mm. with james bond feel to it okay like el mariachi once yeah. he becomes el mariachi like the myth the legend the man he's known as l l yeah, yeah the as in <laughs> as in the, the i know what it means <laughs> thank you <laughs> no i think that's maybe i didn't even think about that before but I, i'm thinking about the first mad max movie the road was it road, road warrior no it's just no, mad max it's mad max right. right i get the same kind of vibe except mad max was like I think a bigger budget, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Well, they had a lot of cars and but, stuff. But uh, I, I, I like that movie. Yeah. Whereas this movie, I don't dislike this movie. It's just, I, I don't care if I ever watch this one again. I'll go straight to Desperado next time because it's basically the same movie. It, Chicks are hotter in Desperado. Oh, for sure. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 we're going yeah. to talk about Selma High okay. in a minute. And, uh, you know, this movie, it's like, I'm not going to shit on it or nothing, but it's just, it wasn't really my thing. This looks like Robert Rodriguez just got his bunch of friends that he grew up with in the neighborhood together. He said, hey, let's go make a movie. Here's the script. Yeah. Let's have some fun. And that was fine. It's, and it's cool. And it, it, the story carries it. And, um, you know, it is what it is. I don't, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. No, that's know, fine. I'm not going to. I'm not gushing over it like you guys are, but. Well, it, I just, I just enjoy it for, like I said, I, I this is the third movie i watched in this trilogy like i didn't know it existed until oh. much, much later so like having having watched it and knowing like oh this is like an origin story for yeah. the original or the for desperado that i really liked and it was just kind of yeah. cool to see where it all began and to see the creativeness uh -huh. of robert rodriguez and like the camera angles and shots some of them are a little over the top like you're like super low down you're looking mm -hmm. up at the person it gets a little wonky at times but i, I totally get how film students and film buffs would really like this movie. Yeah. It's like, I, I get why Kate is yeah. just like into when, this. When I was in film you school, know? I watched this movie like so many times. I even read the book, A Rebel Without a Crew, that Robert Rodriguez wrote yeah. were about the making of this movie. And if anyone wants like a crash course on indie filmmaking, like read that book. It's, it's really interesting. It's probably very good. That's cool. Uh, all right. Well, I, I've kind of gushed over this movie a bunch. Um, let's talk about the main character, uh, El Mariachi. El Mariachi or Azul? Azul? No, not Azul. Azul is the bad guy, right? Azul yeah. is he's one the of the bad guys. Blue. The, and he's, yeah, they, the, the guy the, with the guns. Yeah, the guy with the guns. Um, no, I'm talking about the actual, the kid, the young kid, the guitar player. Okay. Um, he's such a likable character. Yeah. It's so funny to watch him go from like the super innocent, I just want to play guitar, you know, I just want to hang out and drink soda. Give me a soda pop. Send me soda mm -hmm. pop. Like you don't drink, it. All, all we have is piss warm changa. Like you don't want a beer. It's like, no, no, my voice is my life. Like mm -hmm. he's such a wholesome character. Yeah. And to see him get thrown into this freaking like cartel inside battle nonsense. And he's just kind of like fumbling his way through. And the idea that this kid who, like I said, is very wholesome and has wants nothing to do with violence, wants to love and create and write music is absurdly good at shooting people. <laughs> it makes me so happy to watch it. <laughs> it's so cool. There was that one scene where he's been chased down by these cartel guys because they're confusing him for Azul. And he runs and he jumps over the guy's truck and the two guys are shooting at him and they end up shooting each other. And then he grabs one of their guns and then takes out the other two guys. And I'm like, that's freaking badass. And he was just like scared the entire time. It was all just survival and, you know, fight or flight. I just... That aspect of it is really fun to me to see this like almost like a fish out of water aspect and then have him just be like weirdly good at killing people. Mm -hmm. It was kind of fun. I don't know. What did you guys think? Jude, what did you think about that? Well, I think as far as uh, El Mariachi is concerned, you know, I think this that his story is like he walks these streets with a loaded six string on his back. He plays <laughs> for keeps. And he might not make it back. <laughs> Is that a song? And he's wanted. <laughs> or alive. Oh, I see what you did there. Very clever. <laughs> no, I, I, bon Jovi right there. <laughs> I agree with you. I love his character. I think he's he's adorable and um, a, a very wholesome character, like you said. I also really appreciate the love story between him and the bartender. And Domino. Uh, Domino, yeah. Uh, and she's just kind of like, oh, I feel bad for this guy. And then he comes in and he's like, oh, I just accidentally killed four people, blah, blah. Yeah. And she's like, all right, go take a bath or something. <laughs> and then, and then she starts to doubt who he is and she gets a, like a letter opener and <laughs> she's like, you better sing something oh. or you're going to lose you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the tub scene. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's just like, uh, there's a pretty lady <laughs> and I really like her, but she might cut my dick off. <laughs> ma, 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 El Mariachi. <laughs> it's just so cute. And then they fall in love. Yeah. It's it cute. A, it's adorable. I yeah. like it. I'm into it. 
That's how Kadish and I met. Oh, yeah? He held a knife to his dick? (laughs) She still does. (laughs) All right, Kadish, what are your thoughts on El Mariachi, the character? And if you want to get down and and dirty onto Robert Rodriguez's uh, storytelling, go for it. He's going to get down and dirty. All right, cool. (laughs) Yeah, so the making of this movie is just as interesting a story as the actual movie itself. Uh, so basically, Robert Rodriguez, um, it, it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, he went to the University of, of Texas at Austin and he wanted to get into the film program. But most film programs, you have to finish some prerequisites in order to get accepted. And so, uh, you know, he was really bad at, at school. And so he failed all of his prerequisites and they wouldn't let him into the film program. And so he just started making like his own movies. And he made this short film called Bedhead, which was like uh, a big kind of festival darling, like it won all types of film festivals. And uh, he got it in his head that he wanted to, you know, kind of just screw film school, I want to make a movie. And so he decided he was going to make a movie, like a practice movie, in order to figure out how to make a feature. And in order to raise the money to do it, he sold himself into medical experimentation. Mm -hmm. Um, And he he basically signed up for like a 30-day drug trial for like some type of cholesterol medication where he had to be stuck in a like quarantined uh, building for like a month for 30 days. And um, while he was doing that, he decided, you know, I'm going to take this time because, you know, there's nothing else to do. I'm going to write my script that I'm going to make. And the original concept was to make like a kind of short action movie that he could sell to, you know, uh, you know Telemundo or, you know, some type of straight to video um, Spanish language um, production company. And while he was in uh, the drug trial, he met Peter Marquette, who played Moco in this movie. And uh, to give you kind of an idea of like the um, the low budget nature of this, so Peter Marquette, he's an American, he's a white guy, and he doesn't speak a lick of Spanish. <laughs> and so when you know, like like Jude said before, they basically had to basically just take people off the street and be like, Hey, you want to be in a movie? And everyone was like, yeah. And that's one of the reasons why there's not a lot of dialogue in this movie. Cause like people weren't actors. They couldn't learn lines or anything like that. Robert R- Rodriguez would just be like, go here and do this. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so Peter Marquette, you know, he had to deliver all of those lines in Spanish and didn't speak a word of it. So th- one of the reasons why he's always wearing sunglasses is because he's reading his lines <laughs> off, off screen. And, uh, you know, um, just like, very creative ways to like hide that. And Robert Rodriguez would help him with the pronunciation and things of that nature, but he never understood what he was saying. Uh, so, and uh, a lot, uh, the way that this was working, so Robert Rodriguez had no crew, it was just him. So he would shoot these scenes and he basically, he borrowed an Aeroflex 16 millimeter camera from a friend of his and he did, he'd never shot on film before. So he was basically learning to shoot on film as he went. And if you watch this movie, like he's using um, very high grade um, film stock, so he didn't have to light a lot. So it was like film stock that really liked light. So a lot of the, uh, scene, like pretty much this entire movie was shot with natural light. Like mm-hmm. he didn't really, you know, kind of light anything. So it has kind of almost a documentary feel to it. And he just used like very colorful locations in order to make it feel like, you know, it was, you know, kind of a little bit more fancy than it actually was. And, uh, you know, he, he borrowed this Aeroflex 16 millimeter camera and he'd shoot a scene. And because he, it was just one guy doing it, you know, Robert Rodriguez, he'd have to, after he was done shooting the scene, he would take out like a little uh, cassette deck recorder with a microphone and just have the actors repeat what they just did Oh, geez. and record the audio for it. And basically when it came to post-production, he would sync up, you know, as best he could the audio from, uh, you know, <laughs> the people recording their lines after he'd already shot the scene. Yeah. And another thing that he did was like, you know, his budget was so tight and film is so expensive. I don't know if you guys know about, you know, the, the difference between film and video, like film students have it such so easy nowadays. Oh, everything's digital. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's digital. But like when you shot on film, film costs a certain, yeah, film costs a certain amount of money and then you have to have it developed. And then after it's developed, you have to have it color corrected. It's called telecine. So it's basically like three different costs piled on top of doing film. And this was something that I had to deal with when I was making my movies. So Robert Rodriguez, you know, he only had $7,000 to work with. And so he would only shoot stuff once. Like he'd never do a second take of anything. 
And part of his interesting editing style is because he had to edit around all the flubs that happened <laughs> during uh, the, the shoot of this. And in some cases, like he even left the flubs in, like, you know, that, that scene where Mariachi's walking down the street with like the gun and the magazine hits that telephone yeah. pole, Yeah, you know? And uh, uh, that was a complete accident, but Robert Rodriguez- It worked. It, it, it did work, oddly enough, but Robert Rodriguez was basically like, I'm not reshooting that. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's like, awesome. I don't, I don't have the, the film to do that with. So I, okay, because you mentioned it, and because I'm I'm remembering what that scene was, I remember thinking when I watched it just this weekend, I was like, oh, it's because he's not used to having guns, so he doesn't understand like you know the physicality of carrying one, and mm -hmm. he makes mistakes. Like I thought that was a part of his character. <laughs> That's really funny. No, it's the truth. Yeah, <laughs> he just didn't know how to handle guns. It's the handle truth guns. of being a badass with a gun. They're heavy, and sometimes you walk into shit. <laughs> so. Lesson learned. Thank you, That's Robert awesome. Rodriguez, for yeah. teaching us. Yeah, but a lot of the the people who appear in this movie aren't actual actors. They're just people that right. were in yeah. town. And so, like, for instance, the guy who runs the hotel that Mariachi stays at was the actual owner of the hotel. Oh, that's great. And so he, Robert Rodriguez was like, if you let us shoot here, we'll put you in the movie. And he was like, really? And that's one of the reasons why, like, you, you know, he doesn't have, like, a whole lot of dialogue. And one of the interesting things about this movie that I like when I'm watching it is, like, there's so much of just people just sitting around mm -hmm. and like they, they don't say anything. They're not really doing anything. They're just there. And so in a, in a weird way, it's almost a very surreal kind of like setting to have the movie in. And uh, I, I really in, in enjoy that odd aspect to it that is completely missing from the sequels. Because mm. in the sequels, you know. It's very action packed. Well, it's not just action packed, but um, people are always talking in the sequels. Like, Everything's much more deliberate in the sequel than it is in, in this original. Yeah. Well, I, I just think that because of the nature of how he had to shoot everything in El Mariachi, there wasn't, like it, it gave it like a different feeling. Like for instance, like when the bus hits the guy, when he's like, you know, sliding down the thing, like that was an accident. Like he, he, was, he wasn't supposed to get hit by that bus. Oh my God. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, but like, that was just one of those things where, you know, they were like, oh, you know, he, you know, the actor's fine. Let's leave it in. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> no, I thought that was intentional. I mean, how, how else do you get a bus to go Is down? Is this why it's called guerrilla style? I, apparently. I don't know, but because they mentioned. He's welcome that, to the jungle. That bus shows up in every movie. Well, yeah, but I mean. That's just how the buses in Mexico look. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So, I don't know. Is yeah. that racist? No. That's like saying the Vegas buses are, you know, double deckers. Or, or like colored. a school bus is yellow. Yeah, you know? it's just so, it's just how it is down there. That's the company that runs it. The blue. I was joking. Uh oh. Well, we have to be very defensive. <laughs> Take me literally. I was saying, is it racist against buses? Against buses? That's why it's funny. Oh. You <laughs> right over my head. So fu funny and <laughs> smart and witty. Please continue. Just right. edit that uh, out. You know, all the locations <laughs> in this movie are um, practical. Like there, there were no sets built, so everything has a very authentic feel to it. Um, you, you know, like there, there were times where like Robert Rodriguez just, you know, he didn't storyboard out anything, so he was just shooting as he went. And uh, there were times where like he would forget stuff, and he would have to like fix it in post. So like in the opening scene, when the mariachi's coming into town, he finds this coconut stand and he goes there and he gets like a coconut. And, uh, you know, when they were just filming like the street scenes, they saw this coconut vendor and they're like, oh, hey, let's film you getting like a coconut. And Robert Rodriguez forgot to get a shot of him paying for the coconut. And so in post-production, he was like, oh, shit. Like, it's a free coconut. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm just going to write it so that it, the coconut was free. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. I just walk into this town and I get the free coconut. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. This was a very good town. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the people who worked at the jail at the beginning, like mm -hmm. the, those were like the real jail workers. And there were actual prisoners in the cells. Oh, my gosh. That's you know, crazy. When, when, he, when he was shooting it. Um, and uh, this movie is just like full of stuff like that and uh like the, the special effects squibs i think jude you you kind of talked about that earlier so they would have like a weightlifting belt like one of those thick leather weightlifting belts mm -hmm. and they would fill condoms full of blood and then put the squib real blood no, no not, <laughs> not real blood um, but they would put the squibs in the inside the condom and typically you're supposed to put like you know the blood pack on top of the squib yeah and so they would take these condoms to to the weightlifting belt and you know uh the mariachi guy, uh, the guy who plays El Mariachi, um, he was kind of like his, Robert Rodriguez's de facto second crewman. 
And so he would be the one off screen to activate the squibs. And none of these actors who got shot, like, realize like how powerful these squibs are because like they're basically like little explosive <laughs> yeah, little firecrackers going yeah. off. and uh you know when when those squibs go off they're not acting they're actually like in pain oh. <laughs> <laughs> because when those things explode like you know it feels like you're getting punched in the chest in fact uh at the end where moco uh, peter marquette um gets shot mm -hmm. um his reaction is 100% real because like he didn't realize like how painful uh, that was going to be. Um, and so like, you, you know, like the ingenuity and stuff, um, another big thing, and this was like one of my film school tricks um, that I learned from Robert Drugger, you guys, was um, in order to get his, his dolly shots, his tracking shots where the camera's moving around and stuff like that, in order to make it as smooth as possible, he, he got a broken wheelchair from the local hospital and he would be in the wheelchair and just like, you know, moving around with his camera and stuff like that in the wheelchair. That that was his like, you know, poor, poor man's dolly. That's ingenuity right there. I love it. That's cool. I, I wonder if because the actor who played Moko didn't understand any of the, di the dialogue, did he know that he was a bad guy while they were filming it? Did he have to see the movie and then be like, oh, shit, I'm a bad a, guy. No. I played a drug dealer? <laughs> no, he, he knew he was a bad guy. Like, I think the script was written in English, and uh, Robert, Rod, Rod, Robert Rodriguez actually had to, because he spoke English, but he didn't write Spanish. You mm -hmm. know, like he spoke Spanish, but he didn't write Spanish. So I think he had to get the actor who played El Mariachi to translate it in, I, like, I, I into almost, the written word. I kind of think the, the the drug lord guy is probably my favorite character. Moco? Moco. Moco? Yeah. Yeah. How come? I, I don't know. Just was it the white? Maybe it was just because you could. He was just kind of a jerk. You yeah. Know? I don't know. I like yeah, how he like. If, I like how he lit lit his matches off of his hands. Yeah. yeah. Face, you know? And I love that they tie back this movie to the next one and yeah. the one after it too. There's just little things in each movie yeah. that tie back directly to this. Yeah. Well, Rob, yeah. Well, if if you notice, all the bad guys in each movie always wear white. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird because I kind of said like Desperado kind of seems like a new version of this one. Like it's very, very similar. There's a lot of similar shots. The bad guy's very similar, but there's slight story changes yeah. that make it different. And yeah. what I was going to talk about the, the whole, the trilogy on a whole is Robert Rodriguez kind of plays fast and loose with the whole like continuous cinematic right. universe. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. <yeah. laughs> there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense and things that change throughout each movie, but they just kind of roll with it. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's all part of the same so story. This, you mean like how Danny Trejo is dies dead, but and then, then comes he's back to also life. also in the next <laughs> one? Oh, he must and be Cheech his, he must yeah. be his yeah. brother or something. Well, Cheech, uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it for a Desperado. We'll, talk about we'll get that there. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right, guys. Uh, let's do final thoughts well, for Elm. I still got I know you still have four stuff to say. All right, make it quick. A couple He's more minutes. He's going to let you have your final thoughts, which will be 45 minutes, and the rest <laughs> of us get 30 seconds. Well, uh, okay, so one of the things that makes Robert Rodriguez a real standout is that his editing style. Mm -hmm. you, you know, when this movie came out, no one was doing action movies like this. I mean, like, you had, like, your John Woo's and, like, your professional action movie guys, but, you know, like, like, the film student level, the the straight to video level, stuff like that. No one was doing this type of stuff. And when Robert Rodriguez, um, you know, made this movie, like he really crafted it in the editing room because he had like all this footage that he had shot and he had like a rough script to work with, but it wasn't really refined. And so like a lot of the action scenes that you see in this movie, which really make it stand out and really kind of made, made him like the it guy in Hollywood was based around like how he constructed the scene. And Robert Rodriguez, is one of probably the most inventive action directors, I think, working in, in Hollywood today. And a big re reason for it is because he kind of understands like the, the filmic language. Um, you know, I always say that if you want to have a good action scene and it needs to have one of three things and ideally all three things. And the first is that you have to care about the outcome. So like if you look at something like um, uh, Captain America Civil War, or the final fight between Cap and Iron Man. And like, you're like, I don't want either of these guys to lose. Yeah. You know, like that's an investment. That's like, you care about the outcome. Um, you know, the, the second uh, aspect of a really good action scene is that uh, there has to be something at stake. So like, you, you know, the outcome of the action scene has to matter to the audience. And uh, thirdly, um, you have to have a good buildup to an action scene because a good action scene is like the payoff uh, to the releasing of tension that was built up before it. 
Quentin Tarantino is really good at this, and Robert Rodriguez is really good at this. If you look at all three of these El Mariachi movies, he spends a lot of time kind of like leading up to the violence that happens. And so when the violence does happen, you're like, oh yeah, let's see what's, what's going on. And uh, when Robert Rodriguez started editing this movie, uh, he didn't have editing equipment, right? So what he did is he had all the film transferred to video, like VHS, and he used two VHS like recorders yeah. to edit between oh my gosh, tapes. Dude. And it, if you've ever done, like I used to do this when I was a kid. So you'd have one VHS recorder hooked up to another VHS recorder and you would just, um, in, in the bottom one that you're recording the master to, you would hit pause. You, well, you'd hit record and then you'd hit pause. And then on the other one, you get to the point where you wanted to record and you'd unpause the bottom one, then hit play on the top one to the point where you wanted to cut and you'd hit pause again. And it's a very labor intensive process. <laughs> it's, a, it, it, it's not a lot of fun. It's a labor of love for sure. It, it really is. But he, he basically like when he shot this movie, so he, he made uh, three trailers for it. And then he took those trailers to Hollywood to, to try to, you know, sell them to, you know, direct to video company or something like that. And while he was in Hollywood, he, you know, just through a confluence of events, he decided to take a chance and send it to ICM, which is one of the big talent agencies out in Hollywood. And the guy who got the, the trailer liked it enough where he contacted Rodriguez and he was like, hey, uh, let me see the feature. And so Rodriguez sent him like the, the feature length version of the film and uh, told him the story behind the making of it. And the agent went crazy. And then like he started approaching studios about doing like a remake for it. And this is how Robert Rodriguez became Robert Rodriguez. He just kind of blew up because of the story of, you know, making this movie for $7,000, selling his body to science all that stuff and, and the ingenuity behind the making of this movie. Cause when he was selling it to Hollywood, he had just had these crappy VHS, you know, um, versions of the movie that he had edited between two VCRs. And so when Columbia pictures bought the movie, they were like, you know what, we want to release this movie. And Robert Rodriguez was like, well, I don't have a film print. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, okay, we'll, we'll take care of you. So they spent like an extra $200,000 to get it back in, into post-production and, and actually cut the negative and, and, you know, do like some dubbing and mm -hmm. stuff like that to make the lips match and things of that nature. And once this movie came out, it got picked up by, um, I think, uh, Miramax, Harvey Weinstein. Yep. Uh, at, at a certain point uh, for like home video or, or something along that nature. So like they, they made a lot of money off of this thing. And uh, the studio decided, you know what, we're not going to remake this. We're just going to give you money for a sequel. And that, that's what leads into Desperado. Nice. Perfect segue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Real quick, uh, Jude, do you have any final thoughts on El Mariachi? Uh, I think I already said everything that I needed to about this. Um, I had never seen it before. And upon watching it for the first time, I was just really blown away by how good it is. And especially considering, like like Kadish said, like the making of it, the story behind it, that yeah. just is just so impressive that it actually made me appreciate it more than I like desperado not that i don't like desperado <laughs> i like it um but this just catapulted it yeah. um, to a to a higher standing in in my book right on uh for me i like i said i i enjoy this movie thoroughly i'm kind of with vader i understand where he's coming from where you're like this is low budget student stuff it's not really flashy it's not you don't it's, appreciate good it's things. not the best thing in the world although we do gush on it and i do enjoy the heck out of this movie it's definitely like that student film level so i can appreciate it for everything that cage was talking about but i also understand where vader's coming from where he's like i need a little bit a little bit more. I need, a, I need a little more. Yeah, I need a little polish on my on my movie. So I get where you're coming from. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite of the trilogy, but uh, it's it's up there for me just based off of where I can see a young director coming from and watching an unpolished version versus what he's capable of with a produ full production team and some money behind him and stuff like that. So, Alex, are you a middle child? Youngest. Hmm. Hmm. Why? Because it annoys me when you're like, well, I see where Kate is coming from, <laughs> but also I agree with Vader. Like, it, it annoys me when you play middle of the road. That's Alex in a nutshell, though. He's, he's always are you, middle of the road. Are you a Jan? A what? A Jan Brady. I don't, what's that? He's well, a Cindy. He is a Cindy. What are you guys talking about? Is that Brady Bunch? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. You're so old. <laughs> Child. <laughs> Vader. Do you have any final thoughts for this movie? No. Okay. <laughs> whatever. All right, cool. It's a El Mariachi, cool movie, whatever. It's just, 
it was it was just, it is what it is it, okay. was, it was fine all right cool Vader I, doesn't appreciate cinema like oh he did. He, he's I'm like just, i, I'm just I not like a, pretty pictures i'm not a student <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. One last thought before we <laughs> yeah. close out on this movie that I forgot to say. I'm glad that at the end of the movie, after everyone's dead, El Mariachi rolls off into the sunset with a his, motorcycle. his girlfriend's dog. Yeah. <laughs> and it's her motorcycle and her dog. Yeah, it just right. steals everything from a dead lady. Yeah. Rolls yeah, out. but I'm glad like so many times like there's do- there's like animals in movies and the animals just get left behind. You're like, well, what happened to the dog? Yeah. And he takes the dog with him. There you go. He's like all strapped up to at, the motorcycle. I think it's cute. And, and that last scene with the motorcycle, so Robert Rodriguez He's got like the had, claw, right? Well, he, he had created like a special glove for the mariachi to wear. And the day they were shooting, he had forgotten it. So he just used like duct tape to <laughs> make it look like a glove, colored it black. So yet, yet yeah. more innovation. Yes. Robert Rodriguez. yes. All right, guys. Before we move on to our uh, second movie, Desperado, a real quick word from our sponsors. Welcome back. All right, guys. We're going to dive into the second movie in this awesome trilogy, Desperado, starring Antonio Banderas and Selma and Hayek. Antonio, Antonio Banderas. Antonio, ba- Antonio no, Banderas. No, no. It's too sexy. It's too sexy. It's too sexy. You can't He's use so that sexy. joke in both movies. <laughs> <laughs> Choose one. Watch me. Uh, all right. <clears throat> I'm going to start this off by just saying that this movie is responsible for me marrying a Latina woman. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yes. I saw this movie when I was at that peak age of what am I going to, what am I attracted to? And boom, Selma Hayek. And I was like, Selma. that's it. <laughs> that's all I want. <laughs> you, you got long, the, the Latino heat. Huh? Yeah. Long, black, curly hair, tan skin. I was sold. This movie Ooh. is responsible for my <laughs> entire For life fetish. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it and and uh this gosh i saw this movie when i was a teenager i think it was probably one of the first rated r movies i've ever seen and it's also the movie where i learned most of my spanish swear words from <laughs> so <I win. laughs> this is uh this is like a pivotal movie for me in my life i i fell in love with it and uh, the action like we talked about before with robert rodriguez the way he creates these action scenes and the way antonio banderas kind of carries uh, himself throughout this whole movie it just freaking blew my mind when i was a teenager and it's one of my favorite movies ever made mm-hmm. so that's my general thoughts on this movie uh yeah, jude you, you, want- you know uh when oh. uh, they shot the sex scene in, in this movie yeah yeah uh, i remember the sex scene the <laughs> spur <laughs> yeah it's all, my favorite part the, the, the entire crew like showed up on the day oh, of course they and, did and robert rodriguez is like no it's just gonna be me and the, the camera guy <laughs> and the crew was like oh, <laughs> oh man. good for him good for him <laughs> that wasn't selma anyway right no, it was. It was. It was? Yeah. I thought it was a body double. No. Well, she, like don't it even no more. Body double. she don't need no, no body double. She don't need no body double. No, I thought she was like, I was like, I'm not getting naked in front oh, okay. of all these guys kind of uh, accurate. Well, good on Robert Rodriguez for like closing it yeah. down to only a handful yeah, of people. Yeah, you, you got to remember, like she wasn't Salma Hayek before this movie. No. She was just like some, uh, you know, Mexican actress who, was, she was big in Mexico, but in America, she was like non-existent. And this was the movie that really put her on the map. So like, she wasn't above doing nudity at this point. <laughs> All right. I also really appreciate that the um, El Mariachi from the first one is also in this, but now El yeah. Mariachi is now played by Antonio Banderas because yeah. yeah. we'll, now we have a big budget. We'll talk about that in a minute because yeah. that's one of my favorite, like not favorite, but it's it's. I thought it was really cool how they kind of transition. Might as well just talk about it right now. Um, so later on in the film, we kind of get this. It's, do you want me to do the synopsis first? Yes. Okay. Let's do the synopsis okay. first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in 1995, Desperado, rated R with a runtime of one hour, 44 minutes. So the, we talked about the original having a budget of $7,000. So the budget for this one is now $7 million. Ooh. So what do you think it brought in, Alex? Um, $85 million. Vader? I, I'd probably around that. Uh... Yeah, around 80, 85, probably, I think. 25.4 million. Okay. So oh. nothing to sneeze at to a, a, like compared to a seven million dollar oh, well, budget. Yeah. It made twenty five million. So that's I was thinking great. I was thinking blockbuster. Well, no, I mean I think that the this really caught people's attention and people were were going to see it, but um it, it wasn't Independence Day. Mm-hmm. It made twenty five million, which is great. Yeah. But uh it, 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 it was it wasn't bringing in a hundred million dollars oh well that's sad yeah. I, it should have no <laughs> <laughs> i don't disagree <laughs> all right Jude. all right so el mariachi comes to to a new town with an old score to settle carrying his guitar case arsenal he's looking for bucho a bloodthirsty kingpin connected to mariachi's past he meets a sexy bookstore owner who doctors him up after he's shot and in return he saves her from assassins and arsonists arsonists 
He escapes with the girl and calls in the rest of his band to come take down Bucho's cronies. And there's a big OK Corral gunfight, which clears a path for Mariachi to get to Bucho, who, dun, 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 turns out to be his brother. Whoa. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. This is like the perfect revenge story. It really is. I love it. I love it so much. All right, so let's talk about the transition between the $7,000 budget to the $7 million budget and how they kind of connected these stories. Everything so, is looking real crisp oh, in this one. Oh, this is a, <laughs> this is a fine looking movie. Um, we just, got I, the I, cast too. We got Steve Buscemi. Yes. We got Sheech Marin. We yeah. got Danny Trejo. We got yep. Sal- Salma Hayek. Yeah. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> uh, we've got the original El Mariachi. Yes. Okay. So this is what I want to talk about. The transition between those two, how they kind of connected them, but they're a little bit different. They do a... a f- a throwback scene where Antonio Banderas takes the place of the original El Mariachi in a memory mm-hmm. that reenacts the original movie. Yes. So it, it's kind of like visually showing you like it's a different person, but it's the same character. And I appreciated that. And I, I like at the time when I first saw this movie, I hadn't seen El Mariachi. So I had no idea the context behind that. I was like, oh, it's a weird flashback. Okay, whatever. Like, I guess that's just the setup. And I thought, I thought Bucho was Moco. I thought the two characters were the same. I thought the same thing. Because they are almost identical. (laughs) Almost identical. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The same white suit, the same, you know, everything about them was like very, very similar. So before I saw Elm. Except one's a Mexican. Well, I know that. But again, (laughs) with the recasting, I thought they were just recasting characters or whatever. Or the memory was kind of faded or they were playing some kind of mind trick with you or whatever. Yeah, I mean, not to jump ahead, but Willem Dafoe is playing a Mexican in the next one. So... (laughs) Let's settle down. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, they play fast and loose with this trilogy. <laughs> but I, I like this movie because it's so freaking much fun. Oh, my God, dude. The gunplay in this movie rivals like John Wick for me. Just mm-hmm. the style of it with the no, guitar case. No, come on. No, it does, it dude. It does not. It's so much fun. No, Vader, you're wrong. No, I'm not. Just let dude, him talk. This, this opening- is not John Wick. Okay. It's not John Wick. It's not. But it's, not it's not even close. As far as gunplay entertainment, yeah. it's, it rivals it's John, John Wick. Wick. No, it's not. Yeah, it does. It, it's fun, but it's not John Wick. It's L Wicky. <laughs> it's Wickish. No, it's it's the it's, original. Is, they didn't they didn't rename a martial arts type after this movie. Did there's, they there's do no, that? There's no gung fu in this movie, dude. No, but gung it's like fu. it's got it's, its own style to it. But I'm saying as yeah. far as like an entertainment level. No, I'm not level. saying it's not good. It's, it is good. It's like a lot that, of fun. The opening bar fight yeah, scene that great. Steve Buscemi is like, oh, you need, and in walk the biggest Mexican I'd ever <laughs> yeah, seen. Yeah. And they have the dude, and he's just blowing people away, and yeah. people are flying across the room. Like, gosh, this is entertaining. I love it, man. Good, I, good fun. So much fun watching people just get blown away. And I, to me, this was like. I just keep staring at Antonio Banderas. It's like, man, that's a good looking dude. That's a good looking dude, man. <laughs> did, like, did, did you know, speaking of John Wick, that if they weren't able to get um, Antonio. Uh, Robert Rodriguez's second choice for El Mariachi was John Leguizamo. Huh. That would have been interesting. I don't know if he would have played that. Like Antonio Banderas got such a like dark and deep freaking. Antonio is such an over actor, and he's like his his, his mannerisms where <laughs> yeah. he's just like oh, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, like it, he it, it gives something to the character and it, and it makes it like an interesting movie. But it's it's you know just. As a director, when I'm watching that, I'm like, oh, it's so over the top. I love it, though. I love it so much. <laughs> it, it works. It, it works for this movie, but, uh, you know, it, it's it's such a exaggerated thing. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, Antonio Banderas is a good actor, and you've seen him in, like, Oscar-winning yeah. performances where he can be subtle and he can be, you know, uh, kind of, you know, smooth and stuff like that. And in this movie, he's just he so hands over it the up. top. Yeah, yeah I yeah, love he that really he chews it up. Yeah. I love that he hands it up, man. It's so much fun. Speaking of exaggerations, and I again, not to skip ahead, however, I just wanted to say I love, like, the intro in this one when um, Steve Buscemi is, like, talking about, like, the biggest Mexican, scariest yeah. guy I've ever seen. And then in the next one, Cheech Marin is like, he was maybe five thin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that big. Not breaking any records, but yeah. bigger than most of us. He wasn't know? that big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, when it came to uh, the casting of Selma Hayek in this movie, so Robert Rodriguez really wanted to cast her, but the studio was was like, "Oh, we we need a bigger star for for this movie," <laughs> and so they wanted Cameron Diaz. Oh, get out oh, of here! No. no way. Yeah, I, yeah. So ba- ba- basically, the studio was like, "How about Cameron Diaz?" And, and they're like, "She's a tall, white, blonde woman." <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "Yeah, but her last name's Diaz. It can play in." Mexico. Oh my god! No. 
Oh my God. Can that you was imagine? the studio thinking. Oh. <laughs> Her last name is D. Wow, man. That's some idiotic <laughs> stuff. No, Salma Hayek, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And, Why don't uh, we don't just get Mario Lopez? His name's Lopez. <laughs> He's Mexican. He could play a woman. <laughs> he can play a woman. <laughs> he can dance. He's sexy. Oh, man. You know what's sexy? This opening credit scene. Love it. <laughs> she swallows her <laughs> coffee. <laughs> <laughs> get really excited I'm sorry and I know you can't see it but we keep gesturing like yeah, this like, look at that we're, we're watching that, that we're watching the movie as we're talking about it so if you see us doing this Gosh. I don't it, it, Antonio Banderas biting his bottom lip and oh, strumming a guitar hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's that shot where he gets up on the bar and he's like backlit by these like LCD like guitar shaped yeah. like like lights and I, I turned to Jude and Matt came on I was like I was like that's my favorite shot that's a freaking <laughs> awesome shot I love it man this is uh, this movie is so much freaking fun uh, what and are we that, gonna talk about that song yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, 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 I <laughs> so good dude and uh, this and, is and a, Antonio Banderas did all of his own guitar work in, in this movie did yeah. he really yeah I was wondering that he, I was watching I'm like it looks like he's actually playing it, it it's funny because in the original El Mariachi. Uh, when uh, the actor like sings that song in the bar, mm -hmm. Robert Rodriguez had hired like an actual like singer to come in and he recorded him and then just overplayed, you know, uh, the, uh, the actor. And uh, in this movie, Antonio Banderas does all of his own singing and guitar playing. Wow. That's, I was wondering that I was really was, it was, um, he's a talented guy. He is very talented and good looking. I know we said that like seven times already. <laughs> it's too sexy. It's, he's too sexy. <laughs> All right. What do we want to talk about next? Well, I love this movie what so much. What else is there to talk about? There's, it's good. It's, it's so eye good. candy. The gun gunplay where he's like whipping his guns out and he's got the guitar case and he flips it open. Like mm -hmm. this has so much style to it, man. It's, it's, it's like they took the action scenes from El Mariachi and ramped them up to 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, Vader, you haven't said much. I, I don't have anything to really to say that you guys don't already haven't already said. Well, speak your mind. You guys are really into these movies. I freaking love these movies, dude. It's like they're just, <laughs> it's like, I like these movies, but you guys are like into these movies. So you guys go ahead and, and say what you got to say. All right. So um, it, it's all good, man. <laughs> so they only had um, Steve Buscemi for like six days mm -hmm. and they only had Cheech Marin for seven days. And if you notice uh, in, in the, the bar shootout, uh, Cheech Marin is hiding behind the bar. Yeah. And that was because he, he'd already wrapped. Like, like they, oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were like, they only had enough time to get him to like do all of his dialogue and stuff like that. And so by the time the... Uh, uh, the the shootout had to be filmed. They were like, oh, let's just have him hide him behind the bar the whole time, and and so like that's why they had a uh, you know hit the shots of him like hiding behind the bar, mm -hmm. and in the scene where like the you know he's he's dead and uh, and Tony Banderas is kind of holding his head up. Yeah, uh, they had to kind of guess what the bar would look like after the the fight scene. So like <laughs> they they just dressed the set as best they could. But one of the things I love about the action scenes in this movie is that um, they only had enough in the budget for two stuntmen. And so uh, every time you see like guys like flying through the air, or, like you know, <laughs> like, getting shot, it, it's the same two guys. <laughs> Those poor dudes. And, and and Robert Rodriguez was like, just just put a bandana on him, put a, put, put a fake beard on this guy, put a fake mustache on this guy. So so, so like they, they just keep rotating in these, these two guys and with like different like you know they were like, probably makeup effects. beat up by yeah. the time this movie got done. Dude, yeah. stunt people deserve more praise than they oh, get. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, the bar fight was one of my favorite things. Let's talk about uh, the cameo by uh, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Oh, yes. I, think, I think that was my favorite part of the movie. It's so good. Cause he walked because I'd never seen these before. I, yeah. I had no, no Quentin no. Tarantino playing himself. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then it walks Quentin Tarantino. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is going on? What is happening right I now? I bet you, <laughs> legit, he's actually had to do that before. <laughs> he's been a what was he a collector or something? Yeah, something. Yeah, he's been he's, that guy a, before. A, a, bag, a bag man, a bag man, yeah. drop guy or whatever. Dude, it was pretty good. The joke that he had to tell, like he that, played that, that so that, straight. That was all him. That was 100. Was that ad lib? <laughs> yeah, that that was. He wrote that joke okay. for this movie. Okay. So see, I was see say. what happened is when El Mariachi was kind of doing the rounds, uh, Columbia Pictures brought it to the Telluride Film Festival up in Canada, and Robert Rodriguez, you know, went with the movie, and in Telluride. Um, I believe uh, Quentin Tarantino was there promoting Reservoir Dogs. And so they were on a panel together and they kind of hit it off. And so Robert Rodriguez was like, hey, would you like to be in my next movie? And he, so this was kind of like the first meeting of Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez and kind of the start of like their, their collaboration. And then we got House just a few years later. <laughs> and, and from dusk till dawn. 
Uh, and the rest is history, as they say. I guess say. we're going to watch those movies. Oh, maybe. hell yeah. We already watched <laughs> Us Till Dawn, right? Did yeah. We, we yeah, did that we, one already. We did that for Vampire Week. Yeah, yeah we it, did. It was August Bites Vampire Week. That's oh, right. that's we, right. I we, missed we, that. Yeah, we watched uh, Fright Night, Lost Boys, and From Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. So if you guys want to check out that episode, it's <laughs> up there in our catalog. <laughs> but I do think that we should do uh, the... Grindhouse? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, Planet Terror? Planet Terror. <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, is it like a death proof death, planet terror yeah. death proof and collab yes you, you guys is there want, three movies no it's just two just two you, okay. you guys want to hear a funny back in hollywood story go ahead did you meet quentin tarantino one time I, i've met him a couple times <gasps> um but i heard but, he's a jerk <laughs> yeah he's a total <laughs> oh that's so sad <laughs> total dick. everybody knows that oh it makes me sad yeah. but i still um, don't want to believe it everybody has a quentin tarantino story <laughs> where he was a dick at least at least he's like consistently a dick you know sorry <laughs> Yeah, he's a dick to everybody. Equal yeah. opportunity. But uh, <laughs> this was actually the uh, the only time I ran into Robert Rodriguez. Oh, okay. This story. So I was at uh, the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills having lunch with a friend of mine who was a New York Times bestselling author. And we were out on the patio in the restaurant in the hotel. And across from us, there's this guy and this girl. And the girl is Rose McGowan. And I instantly recognize her um, because Scream. And uh, my friend, who I'm having lunch with, knows her. And so uh, they kind of recognize each other and they start chatting, you know, just, you know, because we're just sitting across from one another. And uh, the guy that she's with, I'm, I'm like looking at him and I'm like, that guy looks so familiar. He must be an actor, like, you know, but I can't place him. It was Robert Rodriguez. And this was around the time where he was cheating on his wife with Rose McGowan <laughs> <laughs> at the hotel. And uh, they were... Uh, Talking, uh, they had just done Grindhouse, and they were talking about uh, Red Sonia mm. uh, doing that together. But um, you know, I, I was about as far away from Rod Rodriguez as I am from Vader over here uh, at that meeting, and I totally didn't recognize him until afterwards, where I, where I heard the news that he left his wife for Rose McGowan. I was like, Oh my God! That's who that I was, was sitting across from Rod Rodriguez. <laughs> I was a part of that history. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it live. Yeah, but the the Quentin Tarantino cameo in this, like the the joke he tells about pissing on the bar, yeah. pissing on the face, ha ha. ha. <laughs> yeah. uh, that that was all written by Quentin Tarantino. He uh, is for this part. He is surprisingly a good actor. No, he's not. He's a terrible actor. No, like when I watch him in this movie, I'm like, he sells that character, and he's like, they when they were like, hey, guess what? You checked out. He didn't. And he's like, oh, you know, you know, I just met that guy today. Like, I, I, you guys, good job. Good job, you guys. <laughs> Crossing your T's, dotting your I's. I, I like the tourists that come in and they're like, excuse me. Oh, my God, that chick. I wanted bartender. to punch her in the face so bad. And don't expect the tip either. <laughs> that was like the worst Valley Girl impression. It was awful. Oh. So they, are they in Tijuana? Is that where this is? No, no, it's, uh, I forget the name of the town, but, uh, it's, it's definitely not Tijuana. It's, it's some, I've never been there either. I, so I actually I think know. it's, it's the town from the first movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. The bar is the same. No, it's a new town. Uh, I, they, I looked that up, but I forget what it's called. I'm, I'm, yeah. But that bar is yeah. the bar from the first movie. Yeah. The yeah. bar is the same. There's a lot of locations that are the same, but they, they call it a different it's town. It's not the same bar. It is the same bar. It's not the same bar. I mean, it's All not right. the same kingdom and Death Stalker 2 as it was in Death Stalker 1, <laughs> no, but it was no, the same Vader, castle. It was the same bar um, as, yeah. the, as the first one. If you look at it, look at the setup. I mean, they changed the seating and stuff like that, but the they, bar they itself. They also changed the lighting. Yeah. The bar, the bar itself is the okay. same same right. shooting location. I believe you. <laughs> You'd better. <laughs> I really don't, but it's okay. <laughs> All I right. agree to disagree. Uh, they, they also invented the guacamole gun for this movie. The guacamole what gun? What yeah. is that? So basically this movie, it was really uh, rated NC-17 because it was so like bloody and violent. And what they did instead of using squibs um, when people got shot is they had gun a gun, they called it the guacamole gun, and it would shoot blood at people. And so like the blood splatter would like you know be like very pronounced because of this gun. And it was because of this gun that like the movie was so bloody. And so like they had to go back and like re-edit out a, a lot of like the blood stuff <laughs> to, to get an R rating instead of an NC-17 rating on this one. Mm. Nice. Innovation. Mm. Mm. The guacamole yeah. gun. I, I need a guacamole but gun now. I, I will say that um, this I movie. I thought it had actual guacamole in it. And I was like, got excited. tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just shoot guacamole into your you mouth from you over here. You could stand across the room and I could stand over here. And I'd end up with guacamole <laughs> in my mouth. And you get to shoot me like that. It gets rid of aggression and yep. I get fed. Yep. Sign me up. Yep. I'm in. You guys are weird. We are getting weird, aren't we? You're weird today. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little yeah, weird. But uh, the, 
the, the th problem I have with this movie, even though it, like the action scenes are fun, it's it's kind of like a good follow up to uh, El Mariachi is that um, it really kind of shows Robert R Rodriguez's kind of failings as a storyteller because there's there's a lot of stuff in this movie that um, I, I think is just weird. Like for instance, <laughs> uh, the uh, like the whole ending to this like this movie doesn't have an ending, um, and the whole reveal that uh, the bad guy is. El his brother Rodgers comes brother. out of nowhere. Yeah, it, it comes out of nowhere. It's a very telenovela thing to do. So, like, I could, I could see, like, why, like, okay, like, maybe it's a it's a play off, off of that. Um, but at the same time, um, like, the ending to this movie, it, it feels like they wasted their budget on that big final shootout. And by the time they got to, like, the actual climax of the story, um, they were just like, ah, screw it. Like, we're we'll just, just, we're, just going to fade out. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah. It was, a, it was a bit of a non-ending because we get that big reveal that, uh, that El Mariachi's brother is the one that he's been hunting this whole time. And they show him pull the guns out and shoot, and then it just fades out. But they don't... They don't explain what happens to the henchmen that are all behind him. Yeah, you just like, have to... Like his brother is surrounded by hired guns. Yeah. And they don't show what happens at all. No, it's just kind of like he just kills them all. That's just, that's the vibe that you get from it. Like, don't worry about it. It's just like all the other shootouts. He just murders them all. <laughs> and, and that's a problem with Once Upon a Time in Mexico too, is like, it just ends. Like it doesn't have a very satisfactory ending to it. Disagree. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't we'll say get it's there, un, but I, I disagree. I wouldn't say Desperado's unsatisfying. It's just very, very dramatic without having that like kind of closure to it. Uh, it was, well, I was fine. Well, I was like, I, I understood I, what they were trying to a, do as a climax of the film. It, it's not a very good climax. Mm. Um, but like the, you know, him driving off in the sunset with Selma Hayek and stuff like that, like that, that was all like a fine ending, but yeah. I'm just saying like the whole buildup of this movie was the final confrontation between El Mariachi and, and Buco. And you would think that like you would establish that they're brothers early on. So like you could have that tension where it's like, do I kill my own brother? Like, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on here? And uh, you, you know, it was they, supposed they didn't to quite surprise you. I, I know it was supposed to surprise you, but the thing is, is like, do, do you go for the surprise, which you only get one shot at doing, or do you go for the emotional payoff, which is something that will carry over on viewing after viewing? Subversion. No, just basic storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> All Subversion. right. Subversion. There's two things I want to talk about. One is my all time favorite scene. And believe it or not, it's not Selma Hayek naked and it's not a gunfight. It's actually um, what I kind of mentioned before about the comic book. Is it the white people? No, the comic book <laughs> splash page. What? Um, Excuse me. <laughs> Where is our server? <laughs> is he still in stop, the bathroom? Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> You're driving me nuts. Oh, I hate that girl so much. She does um, a really good impression. <laughs> it's spot on. <laughs> I play a white person, like <laughs> nailed it. Um, <laughs> one thing I want to talk about real quick before you get into yours is that bathroom stall oh, that yeah. leads to the secret oh. place. Yeah, that's that's disgusting. So gross. That was gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> well, how else are you going to keep people out of yeah, that Yeah, exactly, exactly. Out of order. Very well done. And Just I found myself sitting there thinking like, is that actual shit on the walls? Or did they like Fake it. paint yeah. shit on the walls to keep people out of that stall? Clever. It's probably a combination. Of the it's probably both. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's the cleanest glass we got. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. I just cleaned that glass. Uh, yeah, it's the cleanest one I have, man. Um, yeah, that's a great scene, too. No, my favorite scene. Every time I see it, I want to just like take the frame and put it on the wall. And, it. and just, um, it's so good. It's when Antonio Banderas just got hit by Danny Trejo with the knives. And he sees the young kid with the guitar mm. and he's like, come here, I'll show you my guitar. And he's walking behind the kid. So you have the shot of I love that scene too. the kid with the guitar walking and Antonio Banderas behind him, just a trail yes. of blood yes. on the wall. It's gorgeous. T give me a screenshot. And I want to post that on my wall in my office. It's, Christmas. it's so good. So freaking good. The, the, mu and, the music in these movies is really good. Yeah, too. music too. But that, like that scene, it like, it always strikes me every time I see it. I'm just like, man, that is like, that's a full open your whole page comic book splash. You know, I just, I freaking love it so much. And then the second favorite is the big gunfight with all three of the El Mariachis that kind of team up. He calls his friends. And this is the shout out to the original El Mariachi actor who comes in and he's got the double guitar case machine guns. Dude. Oh, I thought he was rocket launcher. No. Was he? No, he was the double, the double machine gun guy. guy. Okay. Rocket launcher dude was another guy, but I, it was funny because I was watching this with uh, the friend who taught me how to say my opening in Spanish, and he had never seen these movies before. 
and he was watching oh. Desperado with me. And, uh, you know, it's already revealed that Antonio Banderas has the guitar case full of guns. And he's like, he's like, oh, that's super badass. That's really cool. And then you get the reveal and he, you see the two guys walk in. One's got two guitar cases. The other guy's got another one. They walk in together and they're in frame. And he's like, let's play. Like, <laughs> that's, like, that, that's the buildup I was talking about. Where like, <laughs> like you just have this wide shot and the, the two mariachis kind of coming from the sides. And then Antonio Banderas comes out and, yeah. and, and you see like the cars coming in and, you know, you zoom, you dolly in on Antonio Banderas and there's that buildup to the big payoff. Yeah. And, and and that's one of the perfect things where you just get Antonio with, with that line and he yep. says it so good. He's like, let's play. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, dude. With that, like, it was funny to watch his reaction because he had never seen it before. He, he was like, he was like, I thought they would have guns. Like he, they would have to open it. And he's like, they just started shooting. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude, it's badass. He's like, that's so freaking cool. So like that gunfight, that like build up the whole team up thing with the El Mariachi is like, it's just so fun. And the one fun. guy with the rocket launching guitar case. Yeah. He, he always, does like, like a he always split. Puts, puts his like <laughs> yeah. one leg yeah. out. <laughs> it's so good. It's so awesome. That fight scene was so much fun. And the, again, with the, the um, overacting, I guess, the hamming it up with Antonio Banderas, the way he moves his body when he's shooting, it's like he's got his gun slinging, he's throwing his legs out, he's jumping and rolling. It's, it's almost it's, like a dance. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah, it's very dance-ish. I love yeah. it. it. It's kind of reminiscent of John Woo, where John Woo, the way he choreographs Careful, his gunfights. Careful, Vader's going to get upset if you mention John Woo again. No, and that's John Wick. It's different. Yeah. <laughs> get, get your lady brain in order. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go make me a sandwich, dude. <laughs> God I'm, damn. I'm getting hungry. Wait, this is all yeah. three pounds <laughs> <talking. laughs> I'm sorry for thinking. <laughs> so, uh, like, the way John Woo choreographs an action scene is, is he choreographs a lot like uh, like a dance scene where, like, you know, the, the movements of the people using the guns is almost b balletic, mm. you know, um, the, with the ballet. And I think uh, that was a big influence on uh, how Robert Rodriguez and Antonio Banderas kind of choreograph their uh, gunfights. I have to say, I prefer Robert Rodriguez's style of doing it to John Woo's. I'm not really yeah, a huge John Woo fan. You've never seen like the true like Hong Kong John Woo though. Like you've seen the Americanized version of John Woo. It's very different. All right, give me a list of movies and I'll check them out. Yeah, I will. Hard Boiled, the Hard Killer. Boiled. Killer, okay. Yeah. All right, send him, text him to me, and I'll watch him this weekend. I also love like you don't have time to watch extra shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> I also love in, in the bar fight, you know, the, the final like gunman who's, yeah. you know, kind of comes out and attacks Antonio Banderas, that part where, you, you know, like they're kind of stepping around the dead bodies and you can tell like the bad guy's going to go for a gun and Antonio Banderas is like, no, da, 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 da. no, 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 no. <laughs> it's like, you want to leave? Leave. Yeah. If you want to stay. You stay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then like they go for the guns and they keep trying to kill each other and like the guns are all empty. Yeah. It's a great. It's just a great scene. That is a great scene. I love it too. All right, so let's talk about um, final thoughts and or favorite scenes. Uh, Vader, what do you got for us, buddy? It's taking pictures of the dog. I'm taking right pictures now. of the dog. <laughs> you just checked out. <laughs> well, you guys are just like so into these movies. You know, I. I, I Vader just hates with Mexicans. <laughs> That's not true. No, don't, do that. don't put that out there. I have, I have no issues with Mexicans at all. It's <laughs> like these Mexicans and their stupid movies. <laughs> um. I don't know what to say. I mean, you guys. Do you have it? What's your favorite scene? Like when you watch this movie, you're like, oh, shit. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I like it when Quentin shows up. You know, yeah. I like I, I I immediately from the get go knew I was going to enjoy this movie better. Or is that is, does that sound right? More. More better. More good. <laughs> Third bird, they're more better. I don't know how to talk. Um, man, that sounds good really bad. I just, I, just went, I just went full down syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> Simple oh, Jack. <laughs> That's a that's an edit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is my good or best favorite. This is my good or best favorite. So what's well, more uh, offensive, the Southern thing? So, uh, <laughs> God damn it, Jude. <laughs> <Don't turn down. laughs> Going back in time. This tropic thunder moment. <laughs> Never go full Three, retard. <laughs> Can't put this on YouTube. We're gonna die. Sorry, Kate. Oh, we're gonna get a uh, strike on our account. All right. So <laughs> continue. I, I, I just I immediately knew I was gonna like this movie more. Yeah. When the opening scene is Steve Buscemi with with Cheech. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, they got some actors for this one. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> um thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Um I don't know what to say, man. It was just it was just a lot more fun. It was higher budget, you know. My my brain instantly engaged more okay 
So I was, I was, I just liked it more. You right know, on. it had a, you know, every dude out there has always had like a weird man crush on Antonio Banderas. You know, I mean, who does right? Yeah, right? right? Yeah. Fist yeah. pump across right. the table. Um, <laughs> I would totally, you know, no. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but uh, um, if there was one man, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, Antonio Banderas, yeah, it's too sexy. I, would, I wouldn't suck it, but I'd touch it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, no. <laughs> um, You're not going to get a fist bump on that no. one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just it's a cool movie, man. Is in in the next one they even. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they they up the ante a little more even with with oh uh, yeah with this factor yeah, yeah. like uh like Kader said it, El Mariachi was at this level yeah. Desperado was I cranked up like, to eleven I felt like for if people have never seen El Mariachi they don't need to see it if you can you can go straight to Desperado yeah and it can be two movies instead of a trilogy mm -hmm. with no problem at all so, but I had a good time watching the development of these movies because they definitely go from student film to big budget movie by the time you get to the third one yeah and uh it was it was cool to see that right on so. uh jude do you have any favorite moments in this movie or final um, thoughts i love that scene that you were talking about earlier with uh the shot of the alley with his blood mm -hmm. uh, i agree with you it's a beautiful beautifully filmed scene yeah um Let's see. My favorite part. I love. I love the Quentin Tarantino stuff in the beginning. Uh, I love that disgusting uh, toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I um. I I love the little the little things. Um, kind of tickle me. Like the scene where they're dragging the dead guy out, and there's just a a ton of blood on the floor, and the guy with the mop is just following them, <laughs> it's just like mopping up all the blood. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I, I just start to finish. This is just a a good fun film uh i love that salma hayek is just walking around in a belly shirt and a skirt and she's oh, like i'm a i'm a bookstore owner <laughs> she's so <laughs> beautiful like, oh my god Every, everything that she does that's not like her dialogue her face she's just she's just so good like she's taken out that bullet and she drops it which i'm i'm sure wasn't scripted and she just went oops and like it's just so cute and and the things that she does with like her face and her body is just it's just so good and it's just so true to that character throughout yeah. throughout the whole movie i love like she's pretty innocent throughout most of the movie and then there's that one moment where the, she realizes that they burnt her bookstore down and then she just goes on like a murderous rampage and she yeah. starts shooting people yeah. i was like Hell yeah. Well, she had a plan. Yeah. She was hoarding all of this money, but she put all of her bag, her all of her eggs in that one basket yep. in her bookstore and then they burned it down. So now she has nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. She has jack shit. And now she's like, well, I've got nothing left. So let's take some motherfuckers out. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's, there's that great shot of her and Antonio walking away from the big explosion. Oh, and they're like, like bickering. All the trailers. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that one. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. No, it was like the, the badass walking away from the explosion yeah. so shot. this was 95. 92. I think uh, it was 92. Was was Antonio Banderas a big name at this point? Oh, this is 95, or, sorry. The original was 92. So I'm, he, just he, I'm just trying to like go back he in had, my head. He had just come off of Philadelphia where he got, I think, a, like an Oscar nom or something like that. Or he was associated with an Oscar nominated um you know thing. performance um but like he hadn't he wasn't like a big star this movie kind of made him like the, the a-list here yeah. when this was, is his first american big budget when did, showcase when was 13th warrior oh that that was after this was that after this? yeah okay yeah. that's that's my favorite antonio banderas movie but over this yeah you are a crazy person but, you know whatever <laughs> it's because it's got vikings in it's it because it's better and it's got stuff in it <laughs> with swords and decapitations and people get their heads blown off in this movie with guns <laughs> it's not as good as swords dude uh. it is kind of funny if you look at like antonio banderas's performance in this movie versus like 13th warrior he's so much more like subtle and nuanced than 13th warrior <laughs> oh, yeah. in this movie listen. in this movie he's just, he's just like <laughs> oh, oh yeah when, when, when he's when he's like going he's, doing his thing yeah and he's shooting the the, the guns yeah he's they're like literally pointing in every, every direction. direction yeah it's it's hilarious he went f like full captain jack sparrow in this yeah one. yeah oh yeah it's like 
Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it, man. I love yeah, it. Yeah, like when he's like stumbling around when he's like been hurt and stuff like that. Yeah. Like it's it's just so over the top. <laughs> and uh but but it works for, yeah. for this movie. You know, you could tell like uh, Robert Rodriguez was probably like, more, give me more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me more. I love it. Sexy. Yeah, in the bar scene where they're shooting at me. You oh, miss me. That was, that was pretty funny when it's like their their clips actually ran out of bullets. Yeah. Like, oh shit. Yeah. It's, you know, it's good stuff, man. I, this, I have no salt for this movie whatsoever. I love it. Did from you know that, that uh, Robert Rodriguez found out that he was related to Danny Trejo on this movie? What? Are they? That's cool. Yeah, they're second cousins. Nice. That's awesome. Wow. We didn't talk about Danny Trejo much in this movie or th yet, right? Is he this, this, this was my first... This was the first movie that I actually like kind of was cognizant about Danny Trejo. Like when I went and saw this in the theater, I was like, man, that guy's a real badass. Like, who is that dude? Yeah. 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 And then like every movie after this movie, I was like, that's Danny Dan Trejo. Danny Trejo. <laughs> was this uh, before or after, um, what was the movie with uh, uh, Al Pacino? Yeah, Heat. Al Pacino and, and Robert De Niro. He was one of the I main guys. I was trying guys. to think of what that movie was. Yeah. <laughs> But he, which they we've also him. reviewed on the podcast. Yeah, we, yeah, we, reviewed just, that. we just watched that. A couple yeah, months ago. and he, he um, they brought him in because they were asking him like, "How would you rob a bank if you were going to rob a bank?" Right? Well, like, yeah, he was because Danny Trejo was actually an ex-con. Yeah. yeah. But uh, sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> but like, like, speaking out of turn again, being a woman. <laughs> Come on, she. <laughs> Man, I wish I was a woman so I could use that excuse. <laughs> Throws that card. Sorry, down. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I have a vagina. Give me, give me your punch card. I'm gonna I pop. clearly don't know my place. I gotta pop a hole every time you use I'll that just, card. I'll just go back into the kitchen, take off my shoes. <laughs> anyway, well, continue, kid. I'll, I'll make you pregnant first. <laughs> I'm not wearing any shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, so like like this was a movie that brought Danny Trejo into my consciousness, and ever since this movie, I've been like, I'm, I'm like, I'm on the Danny Trejo train. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. He's is, awesome. Is, for, is it for you like? Like how Vader is like, I would I wouldn't suck it, but I'd touch it with Antonio Banderas. <laughs> no, is that I never said Danny that. Trejo? No, that's okay. You didn't have to. I said it for you. Is that how you are with Danny Trejo? No, <laughs> no. I think it's more like it's like the Mexican fence for uh, fence. What's the god's name? Sven Thorson. Sven Thorson. <laughs> right. Every time he sees Sven Thorson, he's like, Hey, that's Sven. That, that guy can't say his freaking you, you name. Na you nailed it. Yeah. So, he's the Mexican Sven Thorson. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. Babe, if you want to touch think, it, it's, I'm fine with it. I it's your body. <laughs> Danny Trejo can carry his own series. It's called Machete. Yeah. Uh, we, is that we Robert need, Rodriguez we, we too? We need to watch that for the show as well. I don't know. That, is it? Yeah, that was Robert Okay, Rodriguer. we need okay. to watch that. 100%. Yeah, sure. that, that, that was a grindhouse I thought we were going to watch that for this. And then when we watched Once, to, Once Upon a Time in Mexico again, because we, we watched that recently, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like uh, they, they had made a uh, Robert Rodriguez and Danny Trejo had made a, tr a fake trailer for mm. Brian. Yeah, House, I remember. Yeah. Uh, about Machete. And then like everyone like freaked Everybody out about it. Like, I want that movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they actually made the movie. That's awesome, dude. Uh -huh. That's like the best origin story. Ever. I remember yeah. seeing that trailer yeah. and being like, what is this movie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it had Lindsay Lohan in it, didn't it? I don't oh. remember. I, I, I remember the trailer. I can picture him on the guitar with the explosion in the background. Like that. I'm like, that we have, looks awesome. We don't have anything docked in for March yet. So, well, we'll get there. I think it's Robert Rodriguez part two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, is that our final thoughts? Everybody's good for Desperado? Awesome. All right. Next up is going to be the uh, classic. Is it a classic? <laughs> it's a classic. I'm still, I forget love this movie. Wouldn't suck it, but we'll touch it. <laughs> Going, on that note going through my brain we're gonna talk about I, I gotta get even for that one because that's <laughs> that's some bullshit right there <laughs> this is going out in the like public consciousness I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> you're not even mad at me you're mad at him <laughs> i told you it switched God damn it Vader's like don't take his side ever again v <laughs> Oh, man. All right, guys. We're going to talk about Once Upon a Time in Mexico next. <laughs> Just hang in there. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you want to support this podcast, go to SaltyNerdStore.com. Kadish over here has just put up a ton of awesome freaking t-shirt designs out for you, and they're still on sale. I think it's like 5 or $10 off. So go to SaltyNerdStore.com, and you can get... I hate this one, but it's very clever. It's called You Goonies, and it has like a YouTube lo like old logo on it. It's hilariously clever. But I hate the Goonies. But you can go buy that shirt we, now. We know you hate the Goonies. It's so terrible. You know, I've had the Goonies song, that good enough song, stuck in my head since the week we recorded that episode. <laughs> Every day that song runs through my head, and I'm going mad. It's 
your own fault. Earworm. <laughs> I mean, it's not your fault. No, I wasn't even there. <laughs> all right, guys, let's get into it. Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Jude, what is this movie all about? 2003, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Rated R with a runtime of one hour, 42 minutes. Had a budget of $29 million. What do you think it brought in? Uh, okay, well, I like vastly overestimated the first or the second movie. So uh, I'm going to say it doubled. Let's say... 65 million, okay. 70, 70 million, something like that. You v. took my answer again. It's 65, 70. Go, okay. Go bigger, V. Go bigger. Go bigger, go home. 80. <laughs> 85. <laughs> 90. <laughs> 110. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 98.7 million dollars. Nine, how much? 98? 98.7 million. Almost 100 million? Nice. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So most of that budget went to Johnny Depp then, I suppose, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny Trejo is back. Yes. Cheech Marin is back. Selma Haya is back. And the Mariachi is back with a brand new band. <laughs> Johnny Depp hires the El Mariachi. I just said the El Mariachi. That's a faux pas. <laughs> the, 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 the. <laughs> okay, Johnny Depp hires El Mariachi as an assassin. The Mexican president is at war with the cartel. The cartel is planning a coup to overflow the government. Overflow. Overthrow overflow. the government. <laughs> this podcast has been brought to you by Bailey's <laughs> Irish Cream. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, uh, where was I? Uh, the Mexican president is at war with the cartel. The cartel is planning a coup to overthrow the government, and Johnny Depp is a corrupt CIA agent in the middle of it all. He gets kidnapped and double-crossed. Uh, he gets kidnapped by the cartel, and they take out his eyes, and he spends the rest of the movie being guided around by a little boy who sells bubblegum. Uh, Marquez, the man who killed Mariachi's wife and child, so he, spoiler, he killed Sama Hayek, um, <laughs> He killed uh, Mariachi's wife and child, is planning to kill the president, um, but the Mariachis arrive in time to save the president and kill all of General Marquez's people. Meanwhile, Johnny Depp is outside shooting wildly, hoping to hit something, because remember, he doesn't have eyes. Um, and then the president escapes with Enrique Iglesias, and uh, the Mariachi becomes the new president of Mexico? No. 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 Mac, the president's alive at the end. No, no, no. But at the end, he's wearing the president's sash. sash? Oh. So, I think it was just a gift. Yeah, it was just a... Like, hey, thanks for saving my life. I'm yeah. pretty sure that makes him the new president because the president escaped. Well, yeah, but I, he's still the president. I, I mean, elections are so hit or miss nowadays. <laughs> wow. I, 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 I guess he just assumed the presidency. Yeah, you could do that nowadays, well, you know, I guess. If, he could probably just steal the election. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> sold this. No, no, no politics. No, no politics. No. All right, let's talk about this movie. Uh, okay, so if Desperado was cranked up to eleven, this movie was cranked up to twelve, mm -hmm. and I love that for that reason. Uh -huh. It had Johnny Depp being a total douche Dude, in the whole movie, it's and so I funny. loved it. I loved it. It, it had Enrique so Iglesias soft talking, <laughs> swimming and monkeys yeah, he was them, a, and then taking their money. He's just, Good a, stuff. he's just a, he's just a wannabe. Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> That's harsh. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Johnny Depp for a minute because he is a standout character in oh, this movie. Oh, he's awesome in this movie. He's, he's so good. It's I wish so he wasn't awesome. such a dick in the real world. but you Is know. he? Is I thought he was pretty nice. I'm not, I've heard different I'm stories. I'm not going to go. It doesn't Cut matter. Have you met him? <laughs> he doesn't listen, I promise you. It's okay. No, he doesn't care. Anyway, um, his character, this uh, corrupt CIA agent, he has such a suave to him. Like this dickish suave. Yeah, uh -huh. the, I love his t-shirts. The oh, whole yeah. movie. He's wearing a CIA t-shirt to uh -huh. like a freaking. Yeah, that was that was, <laughs> yeah, that was CIA. <laughs> so originally, the character of Sands that Johnny Depp plays, it was supposed to be played by George Clooney, but for whatever reason, Clooney like you know couldn't you know commit to the shoot, and this was before From Dusk Till Dawn. Mm -hmm. um, so you know Johnny Depp came on board, and Depp was the one who decided that he wanted to have a new disguise in every scene. And so he was the one who picked out his, his outfits awesome. for each scene. I could see Clooney doing that. I could see him. Yeah, if he plays a character similar to the one he played in, in Dust Till Dawn, yeah. I could see him playing like a corrupt CIA agent. I think it would have worked. But I like Johnny Depp's character, especially that, that choice that he made to change his disguises because it mm -hmm. gives him such a quirkiness to it. And I, li I like that. All right. The thing, the one thing I really love about Johnny Depp's character in this movie is his quirkiness and yeah. like he, he improvised almost all of his lines. Did all of them really? Wow. Almost all. Of them. That's pretty. That's pretty cool too, because he's 
he's got such a freaking cool little like quirky vibe too and i said that like four times now but yeah. i'm it's like the arm thing the fake arm and he's I sitting the there fake arm. the fake arm is hilarious the fact that he's like yelling at this poor kid like why why would i want bubble gum I, what am i going to do with bubble gum <laughs> <laughs> he's like fine fuck off <laughs> but my, my favorite scene with him in this movie is, is where he's talking about how good the pork in this one restaurant oh is. my gosh and, he, yes. and, and he, he's like it's so good that i have to balance it out yeah so i'm gonna go in the i'm gonna pay my bill i'm gonna go in the kitchen i'm gonna shoot the chef yeah i'm gonna go get my car and drive away <laughs> and then my like you know he actually does it yeah and, yeah and it's just it's such a weird scene but at the same time i'm, I'm like that's the best encapsulation of this character that mm. is, is well yeah i mean he movie. even compares the president of mexico to that good piece of pork he's yeah. like I have to, I'm the one who has to balance this out. I can't let this go on or it's going to throw off the whole, yeah. the whole status quo that Mexico has. Like he, he brings that to the large scale and then the pork is like the small scale. I just, it's so funny and yeah. so goofy. I love it. It's so much fun. There's something about that scene that I love too. Um, but it's the part where he's talking about, <clears throat> excuse me. So he's trying to get um, El Mariachi to come on board and mm -hmm. be um, a hitman for him, essentially. And El Mariachi is like, so you want me to kill the cook? And he's like, no, my car's parked out there anyway. <laughs> and I, there's just something so quirky, like you yeah. said, about that scene that he's just like, he's very serious and he's very dark. But my car's parked out there. So it just yeah. makes sense for me to go kill him. Yeah, so yeah. You, don't worry. Don't trouble yourself. Yeah. I'm going to go kill him. And then I'm just going to get in my car because my car's out there. It's yeah. just cute. I, I also I like, like it. how he keeps paying off people with like lunch boxes for yeah. the money. <laughs> I couldn't find a suitcase small enough for $10,000. So I got you this. <laughs> it's a lunch box. And, uh, you, you know, Vader kind of talked about how Giant Depp is kind of a jerk. But, uh, you know, I, I've heard very differently. And in this movie, um, you know, he was only scheduled for like a certain number of days to, to shoot this film. But he was having so much fun on the set that he stayed extra time. And that, mm. I think that's one of the reasons why he has so much screen time in this movie is because he stayed longer than he was scheduled to. And mm -hmm. so, like, they just shot more stuff with him in it. That's cool. Yeah, he's definitely the standout character because we've seen a lot of these characters before in the other movies. So we kind of know them. This is the one that's like, mm -hmm. this is the new character that we're going to sell this movie on. And it, I think it totally works. And honestly, the way that his character, I think, is written, it could have gone so terribly wrong. But the way that he plays it makes it so good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <clears throat> this character played by somebody else could have been a disaster. Well, it was supposed, did we say it was George Clooney? Yeah, it was, it, it was originally supposed to be Clooney. But yeah. then Were you here for that? Came on. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you think about George Clooney playing this character? Um, I mean, had it been given to me originally, I don't know if I had ha if I would have anything to think about it. Mm. Um, but now that it, I have Johnny Depp in that role, um, I'm just thinking like he's perfect in everything that he did with it. Like Gator said, like he had lived a lot of the stuff with it and it just makes it such a, a richer character mm -hmm. so that role going to someone else um i don't know i just i just i don't think that i would have appreciated it that more i don't think that it would have been the standout that it is right on all right i want to talk about cheech real quick because yes. we kind of we kind of mentioned how robert rodriguez doesn't really follow the rules of like a standard trilogy can Carri we talk about are we going to talk about his hiding spot Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> but that's one. That's the whole part of this thing, right? So in the in Desperado, he gets shot in the head, and you see the injury is over his eye, and we assume he's dead because he he just kind of falls. Oh, over. he's the same character. It's the same character. Yeah, yeah. he's the bartender. But he has I, actually he, he's not. Just, it's what? not the yeah. same character. Are you thought, sure? No, I I just thought he came back and so, just played another guy. But so, he has an eye patch in the same eye that he got shot in. Yeah. So okay. So here's the story. So, <laughs> you know, Robert Rodriguez loves Cheech Marin. Oh, of course. Everybody and, does. And so when he was making this movie, he, he called up Cheech and he was like, hey, would you like to be in this new movie? He plays and, like seven characters in one of his movies. Yeah, but, but, so, but, yeah. but, but Cheech, you know, not knowing what it was, he's like, yeah, I'd love to work with you again, man. Mm -hmm. And so, like, uh, he comes on the set uh, the, the day that they're scheduled to shoot. And uh, one of the, the crew members is like, what is Cheech doing here? And uh, Robert Rodriguez is like, oh, like I, I brought him back for this movie. And the, the crew's like, but he died in the last <laughs> one. And Robert Rodriguez is like, wait, what? <laughs> like he had forgotten that he'd killed off Cheech. And, and so he, he was like, uh, just, just put an eye patch over his eye and don't mention his name. And, and so like it, it's, it's left up in the air whether or not he's actually oh. the, the character from Desperado or just like some guy being played oh, by Cheech I'm Marin. looking up right now to no, see what IMDb says. I 100% think... That You're gonna get the sack check I mean, right he's now. not the only person he brought back that he killed off. Oh in yeah, the, Danny in the Trejo. Last one. Yeah. yeah, and I'm pretty sure he plays the same character in this one too. <laughs> so in in Desperado, Cheech Marin plays short bartender. 
Yes. <laughs> that's what he's and credited. And this one he plays uh-huh. not as short. And, and this one, uh, he's credited as Bellini. Um, uh, no, I think it, 100%. Okay. It's, Danny Trejo's name in Desperado is different from this one, too. Because oh, they do there? actually name him in this one. Okay. They, they both died in Desperado. Yeah, yeah. But that's one of the, the endearing things about a Robert Rodriguez movie. Is he doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like, I like working with these guys. I, I, I'm yeah. going to bring them on yeah. anyway. I like that, too. It's like, oh, it's, it's Danny Trejo as a badass enforcer, dude. He's got longer hair in this movie. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Different, Therefore, different, he's a completely different character. Different, yeah. different guy. <laughs> different guy. No, I love it. And yeah. honestly, uh, he's a more well-rounded character in this oh, he has, one yeah. than yeah. he Dude, was in Desperado. Oh my God. I love him in he, this. He, he's he funny. actually has dialogue in this movie. Yeah. One of the best lines ever in any movie. Are you a Mexican or a Mexican? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's like... I'm a Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> my like, favorite part so of this movie is when they cut to Danny Trejo and he's like outside on the street and he's watching oh, yeah. Johnny Depp or no, he's watching Antonio. Uh, Antonio Banderas. And then they cut back to him and he's like pointing a gun at him. <laughs> <laughs> Just his face. Yeah. In that scene is my favorite part of this movie. It's good. It's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. This is, I, uh, uh, I like Ruben blades in this movie too. Who's that? He's the FBI guy. The old, re- the retired oh, yeah, FBI he's guy. Good. What else yeah. does he play? I don't, I don't recognize him um, from anything else. He, actually, I think he's been in quite a few things. Um, I remember him mostly what, from wasn't Predator, he fe- Predator, Predator the Walking Two. Dead? Uh, I think he might have been in Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, he but was, he was in Predator Two. Was one of the cops, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, cool. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. But I'm, I'm sure he's been in other stuff as well. Oh, sure. Yeah, I just didn't recognize him. But I, I mean, his character was cool in this one. I liked how, like, when he was like, he saw his chance to come out of retirement and mm-hmm. kind of like redeem and, and uh, avenge his uh, partner's death or whatever. Like I, I, that whole transition and h- him struggling with that idea and, and yeah. like being nervous and stuff. It was cool. Pretty, it was I'm pretty sure uh, Robert Rodriguez brought every Hispanic actor he could to, 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 to be in <laughs> and, his movie. And that, that story that he told about the, the, his partner who got tortured to death, like that, yeah. that's an actual story of an actual FBI guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think they even um, showed you like that guy's story in um, Netflix's Narcos. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the thing. Uh, Christian, the guy who helped me with the uh, opening, uh, speaking it in Spanish, he said that a lot of the characters in these movies are like caricatures of real events in Mexico's history. Like some of these drug dealers. Uh, like, uh, mm-hmm. what's the one? What's his name in this one? Uh, uh, Willem Dafoe. Oh, it, I, I I can't remember what his name is, but he's based off of an actual real cartel person. Barrillo. 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 Um, and so there's a lot of like a lot of similarities, but just obviously it's amped up for theater and stuff like that. But I thought that was interesting because I had no idea. But if you do, I just if you, find it funny that William Defoe is playing a Mexican. <laughs> right? Like he's all yeah, tan. He's, he's got a really dark tan yeah. in this movie. <laughs> it was pretty funny. A spray tan. I thought it was weird that they found somebody who looked just like him. To play like this, yeah, his, and that wasn't any prosthetics. Like that guy just, just looks really like looks Defoe. like Defoe. <laughs> and Mickey Rourke Mickey, with his oh like my God. little I, dog, and the dog is called Moco. Yeah, I for, tie is, back to the tie back to the original yeah, bad guy. He's yeah. an all white dog. Yeah, and his name's <laughs> Named Moco. Moco. Nice. Yeah, I, I forgot that Mickey Rourke was in this movie. <laughs> Me too. I was watching him like, oh my gosh, yeah, I remember. He actually used to do movies. <laughs> so a funny story is like in in the final scene with Mickey Rourke where he gets shot in the back. Um, you, you know, uh, he, he said, just shoot me in the back. I want to keep these clothes. <laughs> and, and so, uh, just, just to kind of set the stage for this. So this movie, unlike the other two, um, movies was shot on digital. And around this time, uh, Robert Rodriguez had been going down to Skywalker ranch, uh, to meet with George Lucas to talk about like a lot of the innovations. Cause, um, you know, Rodriguez is big on shooting like, like cheap, low budget stuff. And so any technology that he can use to, make a movie look more expensive than it is like he was really interested in and around this time you know they were shooting uh, they had just shot like the the phantom menace and uh, spielberg or I'm, I'm sorry lucas had really pioneered the use of high definition digital video to replace film and so uh when R- rodriguez saw what you know lucas had done with this stuff he's, he's like i wonder what i could do with that and so he got the cameras from lucas to shoot this movie and uh, originally he had budgeted like f- i think 40 um, visual effect shots, but he, he ended up doing four, like 300 really? uh, digital effects. And mm-hmm. they actually saved money uh, in shooting digital that they were able to put towards the digital effects because every gun that's fired in this movie isn't actually fired. It's all post-production, like the muzzle flashes mm. is digital, the bullets are digital, um, the blood hits are digital. And so, uh, especially that scene in the church, like the, the church mm-hmm. basically said, you can film here as long as there's no property damage. So 
all like all like the squibs and stuff. Like the only thing that they brought in were breakable like pews, benches and stuff. Um, yeah. But but all like the the gunfire and stuff in, in the church was all digitally done in post production. Like the final fight, like all the fire, all the smoke, all that stuff, all digital. Hmm. Yeah. And, and so like uh, the when Mickey Rourke gets shot in the back, it's just like a digital bullet hit. And so he, he he's just like I don't want to mess up this suit. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep this thing. It's a good looking suit. It's a good looking suit. What is it? Blue or purple? Right? It's like a royal blue suit that he was wearing at the it's end. A good looking suit. It was a good suit. Yeah, it was, it was I think suit. it was purple. Um, okay, so this movie I I enjoy it, um, but not as much as Desperado. Like Desperado holds the higher point for me. I think it's more action oriented. The fight scenes are more creative. It's more fun. This one they kind of went more for like the the. Con convoluted plot like this sure. person's betraying this person it's very convoluted yeah there's, it's a, a, bit... there's a lot of double cross yeah and i'm gonna pay off this guy to double cross this guy and but, then that guy's gonna double cross me yeah. and then this thing is happening over here in the cartel and i'm not even sure at this point like <laughs> is marquez part of the cartel because Marquez that, that, was uh, the general yeah that they hired to overthrow the president who then they hired l to murder so that he wouldn't actually become the president. No, he they hired <laughs> L to kill Marquez yeah. so he wouldn't take over as president. That's what but I they just wanted said, yeah. to let him kill the president first, and then they wanted to L kill to kill Marquez. Yes. Man. <laughs> and then and then the, the FBI agent, the FBI lady agent turned out to oh, be Oh, uh, Eva Mendez. Eva, Eva, Eva? Mendez. Yeah. She she turned out to be the, the daughter Her, of the what's his cartel name? Barolo? Yeah. His daughter, and then she double crossed everyone. everybody. <laughs> She's good looking too. Oh, oh yeah, on. yeah, for sure. Do you want to talk about the um, the chain scene with Antonio Dude, and Selma Hayek? The stunt work on that was incredible. Very, yeah, so much fun to watch. Like that gave me like Desperado vibes. Yeah, and did. then the rest of the movie was kind of like. Well, I mean, I think eh. it was a, it was supposed to be a flashback yeah. anyway. I so. feel like there's a better movie to be told in between Desperado and this one. <laughs> well, originally they wanted Selma Hayek to come back for you know the entire movie, but I think she was shooting Frida around this time, and so like they only had her for like like a couple of days, and they're like okay, well we're gonna kill her off, and we'll just do some flashbacks. Yeah, and, and that one action scene was like you know the, the one the, the thing. big thing that they spent yeah. their time with. You don't want to on. be in my movie? I'll kill you. <laughs> It was such a fun scene, though, when they're like swinging off uh, the balconies yeah. with the chain. Uh -huh. I mean, there's and then no. They, they get married with the chains on, yeah. and it's like a part of their marriage ceremony where yeah. they have the chains taken off. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that was my favorite scene in this movie. The rest of it was, I mean, there's a lot less gunplay. I mean, the church scene was there was some good gun, church gunplay. Church scene was good stuff. It was good. It was with a lot the of fun. Climbing up the wall. It was like a little spider, huh? Like, yeah. <laughs> Vader, what did you think about this movie, man? Um,. It was good. It was fun. Better Do you like it better than Desperado? Uh, about the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, about right. the same. Maybe a little bit more, but more. Yeah. Wow. What what gives um, you that? I don't know. I just I, I thought Johnny Depp was really good in this movie. I, I enjoyed his character. Do you like Quentin Tarantino more in the second one or Johnny Depp more in the third one? I like Johnny Depp more. Mm. Yeah. I just so, liked his character. It was fun. So yeah. originally, the character Danny Trejo played in this movie was supposed to be played by Quentin Tarantino. What? What? But, no, that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> but he had to drop out because he was shooting um, Kill Bill Volume 1. Mm. And uh, so when Quentin couldn't do it, um, Rodriguez was like, oh, let's just get Trejo. That was good. Good good decision because that worked. I liked uh, Danny Trejo in this mm -hmm. movie. I fun. love him in anything. Yeah. Oh, he's got good donuts. He <laughs> makes great donuts. <laughs> we need to get some of his donuts for the podcast mm -hmm. next time. I'll, I'll drive to California and I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Let somebody go get some fruit. Yeah. <laughs> I need some same day donuts. Don't go down, buy the donuts, spend oh. the night, and come back. All Don't right. give me no next day donut we, stale business. Ten hour drive. I can do that. We yeah. uh, <laughs> when we go over, you know, because you guys both know my wife and I are crazy. Yeah. And, and we need. To oh yeah, you would totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 drive to L.A. from Vegas. They buy fruit. Really? We do. I've, we do it like do. Two, or is, three, two or three times a year. Is it that it's much like, better? It's like, man, I really want some good avocados and <laughs> some good watermelon. So, yeah, it, it is better. Wow. It, 100%. But we'll go to like the farmer's market or mm -hmm. uh, what's that fancy market? The, the, Where, do you go, to, you go all the way to L.A.? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And then we'll, 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 then we'll drive down the coast and we'll go to Randy's and we'll come home. We'll get a dozen yeah, Randy's it, donuts. It, it, they just do it as a day trip. <laughs> we do. We do it like two or three times a year. Oh yeah, man! It's, it's so Bring much me fun. back some Trejo's uh, donuts. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where that is, but we'll I'll Ooh, find it. Google it's it. on the way out of LA. It, it, it's hard to miss because it's got his face painted <laughs> on like the outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It's we, it's right before we, you yeah. get on the freeway. He, we, he's got a taco shop too. You know, Trejo's tacos too. 
You know what? I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> she just invited herself. I'm what, coming we, on your couple's would do, trip. <laughs> we would uh, we we would drive over to Calabasas and go to their farmers market, which is amazing. Mm. It's so much fun. Yeah. But did you ever get in a shootout? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, man. What yeah. do you mean? What do you mean? It's We're only, watching. It's like, it's only, it's, I, I mean, according to this, shootouts happens like every 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I like how people can just walk down the streets in Mexico with like guns and yeah. nobody cares. That retired FBI guy gets out of an elevator and he's got his gun and he like steps out and there's a bunch of people there and he just goes, with his think, gun. He just like, kind of tucks his gun into his shoulder like, I ain't going to shoot you. <laughs> Everybody should carry carry gun. Everybody should pack heat. Concealed. Get a CCW. Everybody should pack. No, no concealed. <laughs> no concealed. No, you should walk down the street like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and hit your bumping into telephone bumping poles. Bumping into telephone poles and stuff. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, what else? I mean, I, I feel bad. I feel I feel like we're kind of shorthand in this one. Well, but so, what we do. We so even talk about movies. I I know? really hate John, uh, what they did with Giant Depp's character what? with the eyes. No, not with the eyes. Like basically, so in in. The previous two movies, it's a very simple story of revenge where you have the good guy, El Mariachi, mm -hmm. and you have the bad guy, the drug dealer. Yeah. And you get to know both characters throughout the course of, of the film. Now, with this movie, it's so convoluted. You would think that Johnny Depp is the main bad guy, but he's not. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be William Defoe's character or, or the general. Like, there's so many different bad guys. There's yeah. way too many bad guys. There's Johnny Depp is kind of... You don't know if he's a bad guy or a good guy That's or a just a card. funny but guy. You, you spend so much screen time with Johnny Depp mm -hmm. that he should be the, the primary antagonist of the movie. And so everything should be building up to a El Mariachi Sands showdown. Yes. Um, but it doesn't work out like that. And and the, the script for this movie was only 45 pages and it's all over the place. <laughs> and uh, the, you, you can tell that this movie was just kind of like... They just wanted to have fun. <laughs> yeah, I guess like like it's just not a very well put together movie. Whereas the I feel like the other two were a little bit more um, concise. Cons yeah, just 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 better told in terms of, of of story style. And with this movie, it was just like Robert Rodriguez. It was his biggest budget at the time. I think it's mm -hmm. close to three million dollars. And he he was just like, I'm going to do whatever the f I want, and it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. And so, like, it in little chunks and bits and pieces like this movie is like a lot of fun mm -hmm. but overall as an as an you know as a comprehensive story it just it's not very good we kind of talked about this i think on one of the other podcasts where the directors just have this like i have a handful of set pieces that i want to make and then i kind of exactly. fill the fill the exactly. story in between and i think that's what happens in this movie and that's probably why i don't like it as much as desperados because it just it does like in pieces you can have a ton of fun like there's action set pieces in this movie that are just a blast to watch but the overall story is really convoluted it's kind of hard to keep track of and it's it kind of there's a lot of lulls where things yeah, have to be explained you, to you, you. you think chris terrio wrote this movie <laughs> <laughs> a little dig on the who, what did he write? Rise of Skywalker? Right. Rise of Skywalker yeah. and Batman v Superman. Oh, God. I hate this. Those movies are terrible. <laughs> this movie's better than those movies, yeah. but uh, maybe that's just because they're more entertaining and Selma Hayek's in it. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this movie, man. It's just, it's a lot of fun, but like I said, it's kind of convoluted a little. Also, a little the previous two movies had a really solid love story at their core, mm -hmm. which, which was nice. This movie, no love story. Mm -hmm. Nope. 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 So it should be just a straight revenge against Marquez, the guy who killed Samuel Hayek and his daughter, but yeah. that kind of gets brushed aside, which it I, really don't, does. I, I don't think it should. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's a fun movie. It's it's worth watching the whole trilogy from start to finish. Like you said, you get to watch Robert Rodriguez go from $7,000 to $30 million, and you get to see what he can do with that. I think it's a ton of fun. It's very educational, listening to Kadish talk about like all the background stuff about how he did it. I love it, man. It's good stuff. Yeah, definitely check out Rebel Without a Crew, the book. Um, it's It's fascinating to see like just the ingenuity that Robert Rodriguez put into you know, these films and stuff like that. All right. Right on guys. All right. Let's do a real quick uh, recap on the whole trilogy. Final thoughts, uh, Vader, the El Mariachi trilogy. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, awesome. It was good stuff. <laughs> it was fun. You know, like I said earlier, I had a good time watching these movies from, from $7,000 budget to $30 million budget. Yeah. It's, it's definitely worth a watch if you've never seen it before. Right on. Um, I think I'd give the whole trilogy a grade of three stars, maybe. That's so, good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's not uh, Star Trek and Star Wars level? No. Come on, man. No. <laughs> Lord of the Rings? No. Is it, but, is no, it no, actually I, a I, level I, for I, you? I didn't. 
<laughs> I've, I've already gotten so much hate. For I know she did. <laughs> <laughs> do you give it mediocre you give it two out of three back to the futures <laughs> no um it was fun yeah you know I, I don't know if i'm gonna go back and rewatch these movies but but i had a good time watching them um, i'm glad you guys picked them right and, on um it was it was outside my box it was fun i cool. enjoyed it so right on and jude final thoughts on the el mariachi trilogy um so if we're gonna group them together one through three. Um, gosh, what would I rate this? I guess I'd give it a four out of five uh, gunfights. There you go. That's pretty high praise. Yeah, nice. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed the evolution of one through three. Three's not my favorite, um, but I do really appreciate Johnny Depp's character in it. I, I really like everything that he did with, with his character. I think that the story is way more convoluted than it needed to be, um, but it's it's so much fun. The mm -hmm. church scene, the gunfire, the gunfight scene, um, that there's a gun hidden in his guitar that he you know happens to find right when he needs it. Yeah. I mean, it's just fun. Yeah. Turn your brain off, popcorn fun. Yeah. Candice, what about you? Final thoughts on the trilogy as a whole? So I feel like El Mariachi and Desperado are both like four-star movies for, for me. But um, Once Upon a Time, Mexico kind of drags it down. I only give it like kind of two stars. So overall, for me, the trilogy, um, it's just like three piss-warm changos. <laughs> <laughs> but, nice. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, like these are fun turn-your-brain-off movies and and – I have like a whole different appreciation for them on the filmmaking side. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a movie has to stand on its own. So when you take that away, uh, they're not quite as good as, you know, they are when you factor in like the, the artistry behind them. But they're still they're still fun movies. Like I still enjoy watching them. Right on. And yeah, same for me. I think I'm going to give it a three and a half star for the whole trilogy as a, as a whole. Um, it's a ton of fun. I love Desperado with like it's up there for me in top 10, I think, movies for myself. The other the other two are a little bit lower. Uh, El Mariachi, mostly because of the budget. It was a little bit lower quality, but I also love that it had that kind of charm to it. And then Once Upon a Time in Mexico is way over convoluted, but I still enjoy the heck out of it. So uh, it's going to be a three and a half star trilogy for me. I uh, highly recommend somebody, if you haven't seen them, go and watching them all three. They're, they're well worth uh, uh, the time spent. But that's it. That's our podcast for today on the El Mariachi Trilogy. Thank you very much for joining us. And before we get out of here, let's do a real quick shout out. Where can everybody find you on the socials? Matt Vader. At Matt Vader 74 on uh, all the things. Right on. All right. And uh, Matthew Kadish, where can they find you at? They can find me at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H on Twitter and kadishbooks.com on uh, Amazon if you want to check out uh, my Amazon page. And Jude, where can they find you on the socials? You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me on my website at uh, thevoiceofjude.com. Thank you very much. And I am the Salty Nerd, your host. And you can find me on Twitter at un salty underscore nerd. Or if you want to hang out with us, go to our Discord server. We'll be there. All right, guys. Have a good day.